everybody you know I say this a lot but seriously I hope each and every one of you is having a fantastic day also ladies out there thank you so much for subscribing I know most of you are just my mom and her various accounts so thank you mom you're the best mom in the world one of which was my grandma but she says I swear too much on this channel so she stopped watching I don't even swear so I'm not sure what she's talking about today we've got something entirely different on the channel I'm reviewing a 1953 Ford F100 now I'm not a truck specialist by any means but when I saw pictures of this thing I knew I had to share it with you guys if this is your first time tuning into the channel welcome my name is Parker Nierenstein this is vehicle virgins go ahead and smash that subscribe button go ahead and turn that notification bell on as well so you can stay up to date no that is not the truck I I'm reviewing today, but that would be kind of cool. Watch how quick this thing is, guys. Oh my God. Oh, those crackles. Skinny wimp moving? Why would you want that? Here it is, guys. Cue the cinematic shots. Next to me is a 1953 Ford F-100. Well, sort of. It's been fully restored and custom fabricated by Classic Car Studio in St. Louis, Missouri. As you guys know, trucks are obviously not the main focus of this channel, but when I first saw pictures of this beautiful F-100, such an incredible mix of old and new, both stunning looks and rugged all at the same time, felt like I needed to share it with you guys. Under the hood of this F100 is a Ford Racing Boss 302 V8. Pumps out an impressive 345 horsepower. Below that, we've got this beautifully crafted front grille, an old Ford V8 insignia, a custom air inlet for additional cooling. And one of my favorite parts about the front of the F100 is this gorgeous spine that runs along the hood. Let's take a look at the side. You'll notice the F100 sits quite low. That's because it has a completely new ride tech suspension. We've also got these gorgeous 20 inch hot rods by Boyd wheels finished in bronze. But the craziest part about the wheels is that in the rear, it's actually fitted to 335 millimeter Pirelli P0s. The same rear tire width as a Pagani Wyra. Now, for stopping power, we've got Willwood disc brakes, six pistons up front and four pistons in the rear. Speaking of the rear, let's check out the back. Custom Car Studios has built a custom stainless steel exhaust with MagnaFlow mufflers. This thing sounds absolutely insane. Below that, we've got a Ford nine inch Posi rear end. Posi is short for Posi traction, a term General Motors used to describe their limited slip differentials. Now, a rear wheel drive vehicle, 345 horsepower and an LSD, sounds like a pretty nice recipe for some burnouts. The truck bed is lined with stunning oak wood trim and the actual vehicle itself is finished in this custom glazeret green paint. The truck bed is finished in gorgeous oak wood and the entire car is colored in this custom glazeret green paint. All of it comes together so nicely. But what's almost as impressive as the exterior is the interior. The entire interior is covered in relicate leather. I'm sitting on a glide engineering bench that is very comfortable and has quilted stitching. You guys know I'm a sucker for quilted stitching. We've even got a kicker audio system, although I'd much rather listen to the beautiful V8 soundtrack. We've got a 40 Ford steering wheel as well as a classic instruments cluster behind it. Enough of me talking. Let's actually fire this thing up and take it for a spin. Let's do this. We got manual roll up windows. Love that. To turn the car on, you turn the key one click to the right. There's a push to start button on here. There we go. Listen to this thing. <laughs> 
That's awesome. We've got a Tremec five-speed manual transmission mated to that Boss 302 V8. The shifter is very low to the ground, so it takes some getting used to, as does the pedal placement. This car is made in 1953, so they weren't really thinking about heel-toe downshifts in a truck. And it's pretty easy to rev match this thing with a tiny bit of practice. The clutch is very heavy, but the bite point is really easy to find. And it's actually a pretty easy transmission to use other than reverse. Reverse is kind of difficult. Visibility is fantastic all around, which is great because every single person you pass will be smiling and waving. I'm not kidding when I say this truck garners almost as much attention as a Lamborghini and no hate whatsoever, because how could you hate on a 1953 F100? Let's go ahead and kick it down a gear and floor it. Wow. <laughs> it's actually pretty fast. I mean, not shockingly so, but it is a lot of fun. It makes a crazy noise. You can barely see the tachometer. It's just below the speedo in the tiniest font, but I imagine you'll be shifting mostly based off sound instead of actually looking at the numbers. For a car that was built in 1953, they've done such a good job restoring this and bringing it back to life. There isn't a single rattle or squeak anywhere in the interior, even if you go over severe bumps. And the same thing can't be said for cars that were made in 2013. The truck actually handles quite well. The only thing that's a little off-putting is that the steering wheel is closer to the angle of a bus than it is a normal car. It's tilted very far forwards. The actual diameter of the steering wheel is pretty large and it's very thin. It's a little bit awkward to grab, but I think it suits the car quite nicely. Oh, oh my goodness, that sounds good. Funny enough, this car actually didn't come with seat belts from the factory, so they did put these lap belts in, so we feel a little bit more secure, although I don't imagine the crash test ratings would be too good on this thing. What's the point of a truck like this? Honestly, exactly what I'm doing, cruising along these nice open roads, driving down PCH, taking it to a car show, and just enjoying it. I've been <laughs> smiling and having a blast the entire time behind the wheel of this, and this is like nothing else that I've driven. Of course, I've reviewed a few trucks, but most of those are geared toward off-road. This is geared towards being classic, stylish, and actually good to drive all at the same time. Speaking of driving, I think I'll pull over, put on that point of view camera, and show you what it's like to drive this 1953 truck from a first-person point of view. All right, let's do this. As I said before, push the clutch in to the right, ignition. Here's that five-speed Tremec transmission. I love the ball shifter. And off we go. We've got the turning indicator mounted on the steering column here. <laughs> this thing sounds so good. Steering is nice and loose, but honestly, when you go around corners quickly, there's not very much body roll. This Ride Tech suspension has an awesome combination of both comfort on the road and also limiting body roll around turns. I was not expecting that at all. Certainly, if you turn too quickly, this bench seat isn't doing anything for you in terms of support, so you're likely to tip over to the side. And with the steering wheel mounted the way it is, it's a little bit tricky, but just a pleasure to be behind the wheel of this. Classic Car Studio, you guys made a heck of an awesome truck. Also, thanks to Con Media for hooking me up with this thing. Pretty quick. Well guys, I think we're gonna take her back home. We'll switch over to the vlog camera. I'll see you in a minute. Well guys, another fun day. Thanks for coming along for the ride. If you're not yet part of the Vehicle Versions family, smash that subscribe button for me. Turn that notification bell on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.